Do you know it's five weeks to Easter? <laughs> Did I traumatize you there a little bit or something? <laughs> Well, it is. It's five weeks to Easter. We're, we're getting close. It's, uh, I'm, my, man, my heart's been excited. I'm getting pumped up about celebrating the most important thing that ever happened in the history of mankind. I, I am, it's just something brewing inside me, and I, I'm really excited about it. And, uh, and I believe that's part of one of the reasons why the Lord kind of prompted me to, to talk about the altar over the last couple of weeks. And I'm gonna, I wasn't going to, but I feel like there was, there was a little bit more. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we can talk about the altar for a lot because it's such an important thing. And, but I think it's driving us to this. I believe this with all my heart. God wants us to have encounters with Him in a way that prepares us to move forward with this great truth. Jesus is the hope of all mankind. And we need to have an encounter with Christ. And that's what an altar is all about. The, the very purpose, the intent. What is an altar? It's a place to meet with God. That's what we've been talking about. It's a place to meet with God. Now we've made it a lot of things. I've mentioned this before, but depending on how you grew up, whether you grew up in church or, or you didn't grow up with, with any kind of religious background, you may have distorted understanding. You may think it's something that only is in a church or a temple somewhere, or maybe a, a bench or a table, depending on your tradition. But here's the reality. An altar in the Christian sense, because of what Jesus did in this celebration we're about to celebrate, He made us the altar. He made us that way. I mean, in, in, uh, in 1 Peter 2.5, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house, into a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus. We, as God had instructed the Israelites, He had told them to build their altars before the temple and the tabernacle. He told them to build them out of uncut stones. Why? Because it's not something man does. We are, it's what God creates, what God fashions, how He makes us. That's what makes us the altar that we are. And, I, and I've said this over, but I want to just reiterate this because God did not call the church to look like each other, all of us. We called us to look like Him. And God is fast, so multifaceted, so unique, so amazing, and He lets us, He wants us to be the same. There's this movement, I think, in the church to have everybody be the same, and that's not God. It's not God. He wants us to walk in the uniqueness of our calling and purpose. And I want you and I to... Not all of us are the same. Not all of us have the same calling. Man, we're talking about that the other night. And, you know, Steve Hill has this unique calling and, he's, and, it, and it brings him great joy. That's the thing. When you walk in your unique purpose and calling, you discover joy. It's something that you find, you, this is what I was created for. And you begin to discover that and walk in it. None of this is in my nuts. But it's good stuff anyway. <laughs> Walk in that. And, you know, and, and yes, we designate spaces here. We've, we've dedicated them for encounters with God. I believe this, that we can set aside physical spaces for that. But what makes this an altar isn't what's here. It's the people that show up there. If the people don't show up, it's not an altar. It's a, some, some, some steps. <laughs> But you bring the people there, it becomes an altar. It becomes a place to meet with God. I just, I, I, this is such an important thing, and I want us to grab a hold of it. It's where what the prophet Ezekiel said, My dwelling place will be with them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. And it's what's exciting is, you know, one, one stone can do it, but when you put all the stones together, it's so much more powerful. There's powerful things that happen when people come together to the altar. Last week we talked about what happens at the altar. We talked about the forgiveness and the redemption that can happen at an altar. <laughs> Aren't you glad? God forgives and redeems. Aren't you glad that He gives us purpose and vision? 
Aren't you glad that He brings us into a true worship where we get perspective? We see Him for who He is so that we can know how He feels about us. Aren't you glad that He empowers us at the altar? Listen, I am a believer in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe in it not because of uh, of some phenomenon, but because I believe it empowers us to be something we cannot be on our own. To to live out the life that God has intended for us to live. It's a place of intercession. It's where we can lay our burdens down where we can carry the needs and burdens of those people we love and we can present them to God knowing that there He'll bring us to the same thing. It's a place of promise. It's a place where the promises of God become yea and amen in our hearts. It's a place of remembrance. These are all things that happen at the altar. And if you reflect on just those things and how powerful and important they are, then we would want to be in the altar all the time. Matter of fact, I've just been compelled about this, about making my life a continual altar unto the Lord. That everywhere I go and everything I do, I experience a meeting with God in that. (laughs) As if we needed any other reasons as to why we should come to the altar, I want to share a few things this morning. I think they're key and important as well. Especially in this time. The first is that at the altar we find the potential of peace. We find the potential of peace. Paul writing to the Philippians, a verse that I memorized early on in my life. Any of y'all ever struggled with stress? Any any of y'all? The rest of y'all are lying. But Paul writes to the Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. (laughs) Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentleness, your forbearance, your patience be evident to all. The Lord is near. That's about the altar. He's, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, that bringing things to God, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The altar is where we leave our burdens, concerns, and struggles, and we receive His peace. It's where we bring all the stuff that the world wants to pile into our life. We present it to God. We have a meeting with God. And I'm here to tell you, there is no ends of things that we can bring because the world is constantly bringing stuff into your life to create turmoil, anxiety, and stress in your life. And I'm here to tell you, if I didn't have a place to take that, I would be undone and overwhelmed. But I am so grateful that I can take that to God, that I can make an altar out of my life. I can bring it to God and say here it is and here's what he says to me I will protect you with my peace it's not just any peace Jesus said in John 14 27 peace I leave with you my peace I give to you I do not give as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled do not be afraid In our meeting with God to intercede and to receive His promise, Jesus promises this, to protect us with His peace. To literally envelop us in His peace. Those who are not rattled by the storms of life are those who live at the altar. That's the simple truth. It's at the altar we discover that Jesus becomes a place of shelter for us. Word there literally means to be a hiding place, a secret place of protection, a place of peace in the storm. David understood this. And it runs as a theme through his songs of worship, what we call the Psalms. Let me just read a few verses. 
Psalm 27, 5. In the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me upon a high rock. Psalm, one, Psalm 31, 20, in the shelter of your presence, that encounter, that meeting with God, you hide them from the hum, all human intrigues. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. In Psalm 55, 8, do, I will hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and the storm. Psalm 61, 4, I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. In Psalm 91, 1 and 2, whoever dwells in the, sh in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. What I want to share with you is this thing I've called an altar, it's not just an idea. It's not just a concept. It's not a, just a religious construct. It is this one thing, if nothing else. It's the place that we run to so that we can find the peace and protection of God when the storms of life come raging over us. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad for an altar? I don't have to go through the storms alone. Secondly, it's the place we find the anchor of truth. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John 8, 32 and John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want to encourage you in this. Take the Word of God to the altar and it'll break through the deceptions of this world, the lies of Satan, and anchor you to truth. How I many you know there's a lot of stuff out there that confuse you? You ever feel that way? You ever feel like everything around you is... Oh. <laughs> I do. I'm supposed to know this stuff. Listen, I, you know, I, I have I spent 40 years studying the Word of God, but what I have to continually do is to take what Jesus has said, go to the altar, lay it down there and say, God, I need to know the yea and amen here. I need to know the truth. I need to know what you're saying. It is here that the counsel of the world is lost and the wisdom of God is found. Last week I talked about what Dr. Crosby said at the meeting we went to. In our life we have expectation and then we have our reality. And when we have that, what happens in between there, because you know how many of our reality rarely is at our expectation. But the in between there is stress. That's where we get all upset. But here's what happens. When we have faith, and you know what faith is? Faith is the product of the Word of God in our life. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of the Lord. Here's what happens. It's when we take what God has said, what He's put in His Word, and we go to the altar and we lay it down there and we say, God, I I'm not leaving until this becomes a part of the fabric of my life. I want this to not just be an idea. I want it to be a reality. It's when faith is when, is when what God says and His Word declares is, is real to us. And then our reality may still be here, but what's in between is hope. Because see, what happens is then we know that if God made a promise, He'll keep a promise. If he, God said it, it will be done. What's in His Word is still true, and we can anchor to it. There are two things you need to take to the altar. Your Bible and your journal. You need to take your Bible so you know what God says. And you need to take your journal so you can write it down. My dad was an attorney. He said, if it isn't written down, it didn't exist. <laughs> He's like, as he said, you're not finished till the paperwork's done. <laughs> yeah. You gotta. He's like, take that thing in there. Take that Bible into that, that altar room that you make, that place of meeting with God, 
Say, God, this is what you said. And then when he speaks it into your life, you write it down. Say, I'm going to count on that. It's important. It's truth made manifest. In a world that's full of deception and lie, we need to anchor to something that's true. We need to anchor to something that's true. That's why the altar is so important. It's not a... It's that we have this meeting with God and He speaks to our heart and says, this is what I said. And we can hang on to it. The third thing, it's also where we find a sense of divine urgency. See, that was really good until you said that. (laughs) A sense of divine urgency. It's at the altar we begin to see the world differently. Let's say that. We see the world differently. In my office is a print that Denise and I got at one of our national meetings many, many years ago. It's a, I keep it there because it's a, it's a picture of a wheat field. Any of you who been out west know what that looks like and if you've ever been out in the midwest you've seen just acres and acres and miles and miles of wheat fields and that's what it looks like there's a little dirt country road there's this wheat field and in the distance is a storm and the field is ripe unto harvest And the picture, the incentive, the urgency is that let's get the harvest in. Let's get the harvest in. There's a storm coming and the storm will destroy the harvest. Now is the time to get the harvest in. Now is the season for that. That's the reason why Jesus would say in John 4, 35, do not say in still four months till the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. It is at the altar we receive a divine perspective about what's going on around us. We can look at things from the filter of the news and get a very distorted perspective. But when we look at things through the filter of God's eyes, we see things completely different. I was cleaning my office this week. I know, I know. I kind of got convicted about this. I went to a meeting. Uh, the John Doherty, our district secretary treasurer, we were meeting with the church to help them. And, and somehow I came up about his office. Everything is organized, alphabetized, structured. He's a secretary treasurer. It needs to be. And... Uh, And I said, well, mine isn't. (laughs) And he said, I know. (laughs) He's coming to see me this week. (laughs) So I thought, man, I probably ought to clean my office. I I probably, any of y'all ever have, it's like company coming. (laughs) You know, you you, got to clean, you know. (laughs) Only one room, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, right now, they're, it would take a while for us. <laughs> but my office, uh, I cleaned it, and, and uh, I, you know, and you see things you hadn't seen in years, you know. And uh, I saw a, a, a folder, and it had a group of papers that Sharon Tinder's second grade class had uh, written for me years ago. Uh, she had asked them a question. She said, why the shepherds? Talking about the Christmas story. Why the shepherds? Why did the angels go to the shepherds? And, uh, you know, they were second grade. So you got a lot of interesting things. Uh, But the one that just, I was leafing through them, and it was cute, you know, just reading them. and A lot of things, you know, some, they they were good people and all kinds of stuff. But the one that I think, and, and it didn't have a name on it, or I would give them credit, but, but he, they said this. 
The angel went to the shepherd because they were awake and everyone else was asleep. And I read that and I thought, isn't that a commentary on our world today? Especially the church. Here's what God wants to do. He's looking for a people who, who will be awake. You see, we live in a time where there is, Satan has brought about the deception of ambivalence and distraction. We've either been taught to not care or to be distracted. We've come through two years of basically being told, just hunker down. But I'm here to tell you this, this is the word of the Lord. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has come for you to wake up, Romans 13, 11, from your slumber because our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. I'm here to tell you there's a storm on the horizon, yet the return of Jesus is coming. And we need to move from ambivalence and distraction and to become motivated with a sense of urgency by the Spirit of God. We only have guaranteed today. We don't have tomorrow. So we must be about our Father's business. It is at the altar that our focus is renewed and we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It is at that place that we catch again where no longer do I just see my neighborhood as a group of houses and kids that annoy me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know. But I see them as people who desperately need Jesus Christ. My kid, the kids in my neighborhood don't annoy me. No. Some of them do. You know, <laughs> <clears throat> that there's a house behind the church here. Somebody recently just got a drum set. And they play loud and proud. I mean, you know, I'm praying for them. <laughs> I thought if I am, and I'm that far away. <laughs> what are all the people around them doing? <laughs> you know, we can become distracted or annoyed when we need to go to the altar and receive with the urgency of God for those that are around us, for the world that's around us. The world is changing quickly we do not know exactly how everything will turn out. But when we find the heart of God, God has a plan. You know, last year, I was privileged to go with a group of pastors to Hungary and to the Czech Republic. They're in that area, that news today. Presenting, we presented Hungarian Bibles to pastors, how appropriate is that? Do you know where we're going next? Do you know where the next distribution of Bibles is? you know where it's happening in just a few months? It's going to Poland. Do you think God had a plan? Do you think God was working something out? We were delayed because of the pandemic. God had a plan. There are thousands of Bibles that are going into Poland at just the right season. God has an urgency at the right time to do something that can touch the world for Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, the general superintendent of the Assemblies of God of Poland will be speaking at our state meeting our district council this year. I'm excited about that. I'm seeing the world as God is seeing the world. He doesn't, he's not intimidated by war. He's not intimidated by communist regimes. He's not intimidated by tyrants and despots. He is not intimidated by any of the things of this world. He has a purpose and a plan. And he wants a church who's come to the altar, who's been empowered, who's been in, given a sense of urgency, who are walking in the peace and the strength of God based on the truth of God, who who 
will take the gospel to the furthest reaches of this world. The altar is important. The altar is important. It's important for you and me. I don't know about you, but maybe you're going through something this morning that you need the protection of the peace of God. You're carrying a burden, a need, a focus. I understand that. My old granddaughter was sick and they didn't know what, couldn't figure it out. I had to go to something bigger than doctors and hospitals. Maybe you're unsure about something. You need to be anchored to the truth. Maybe you need God to burn into you just like He did on the day of Pentecost. A fresh urgency for our world today. I believe this. The altar matters. And you and I are the altar. You and I are where God meets with us. And if you're here this morning and you need peace or truth or you need to have a passion to break out of ambivalence or indifference, I'm here to tell you, God has prepared a place for you to meet with Him. He wants you to discover all the wonders of what it means to be at the altar today. Denise, if you'll come back. You know, it, it's kind of bothered me that we have, and this, please don't take any offense, but it's so hard to get people to come to the altar. And I understand that, you know, like, hey, I don't want to go up there and admit to something. I get that, but that's not what this is all about. It's not about saying you've got this issue or that, but it's about saying, I need an encounter with God. I need for God to meet with me. I need to tap into the resources that happen only at the altar. And I know that the altar can happen anywhere, but when the community of faith comes together and we come together to one place and say, God, we need to meet with you here today. And I don't know what you need today. I don't know what you might have in your life that's there. Maybe you're going through something that's profound, but I'm here to tell you the peace of God can protect your heart and your mind because the promises of God are yea and amen. They are still true. Maybe you need to have that affirmation of truth this morning. Maybe there's something you know it's true, but you need to know that you know it's true. Come to the altar and say, Lord, I just need you to meet with me here today and remind me this is what your word says. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what doctors say. I don't care what, 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 what all the other voices say. I am anchoring to what the Lord says this morning. Maybe you just need Him to rekindle the fire, the passion, the urgency to wake up. Amen? I don't care. I don't need to know. That's between you and God. 
What I'm saying is I'm just like this. I'm saying, Lord, I need to be at the altar. Not just a place, but a place in my heart. Amen? Will you stand with me? Lord, your word says that we are living sacrifices presented unto you. That we come to you to meet with you. Lord, we know that when we meet with you, there's so many rich benefits. Guilt and shame are taken away. We can be declared the children of God. That's where we can find so many wonderful things that we can discover who you are and you can let us know what you think about us. That's where we can find promises and we can claim them on behalf of our families and our lives and our needs. It's where we can just cry out to you and and it's in there that, Lord, you remember, we can remember that what you've done, you will do again. in that find peace and truth and passion so this morning I just ask that today in this place that for us in this family that we will come and we will have a meeting with you and that we will find these things now, I don't know Lord what everybody's going through but I do know you know what everybody's going through I know that you know what everybody needs. You know what each situation, each unique person, thing in the person's life. And Lord, I just ask that today we as a family can come together and meet with you here in this place. Have an encounter with you. So this morning, Lord, Bring us to the altar. I thank you for it, Lord. I don't know what you need this morning, but I do know there's a God of peace and truth and power that he wants to meet with you this morning. I know you don't, you can make an altar anywhere, but I'm inviting you to join me and come up front here and let's just say, Lord, I'm here to meet with you this morning. Will you come? Will you come? Jesus, Jesus said this. He said, when two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in their midst. He's there. He's here. He's right here. When we make an altar together, we literally are in communion with God as a family together. He's here right now. He's in us. He's working through us right here in this place, in this altar. There's, he's here. He's right now moving in amongst us. And here's the thing. Where Jesus is, there can be no turmoil. He brings peace. He speaks to the storm, and he says, peace, be still. He speaks to the disease, and says, be healed. He speaks to the bondage, and he says, be free. He speaks to the need, and says, be answered. He speaks, and he gives us something to hang on to a truth and a reason for going out and being His lights in this world. So Lord, right now over us that are gathered here, making this an altar unto You, we offer up our praise, our petitions, our prayers to You as a sacrifice. Let it be incense to You. Let it be blessing to You. And out of that, I pray right now into hearts, 
all over this room. I pray the peace of God would surround them in Jesus' name, that it would protect their minds from the lies and the deception of Satan, from the untruths of this world, that inside their hearts they would receive the assurance that they are loved by an eternal, holy God who has redeemed them, set them free, and declared them to be the children of the Most High. They are not alone. They are a part of a family. They've been placed in community, and they are loved by God and by God's children. They are God. You have called them. They are not worthless. They are not unimportant. They are essential. They are a part of your plan. And you, God, have equipped them uniquely to be a missionary, a light, a representative, an ambassador. So, Lord, today I break the yoke of oppression, the lie of Satan. By the authority of Jesus' name, I speak truth and I speak freedom. I declare the promise of God. For what you speak at an altar, you speak and you make it happen. You told Abraham he'd be a father of many nations, and he was. You told Moses he'd liberate the people, and he did. You told Mary she'd be a the mother of, of God and she was he told Paul he'd be the representative to the Gentiles and he was what you speak to us at an altar you will do you will do so Lord we thank you for it we thank you Lord we receive it. We receive it. We receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you would like somebody to pray with you in agreement about something, pastors are here. Pastor Shane, Pastor Jim, they're here to pray with you. They would love to just agree with you. If not, you can stay here as long as you want. But I'm here to tell you, don't run from the altar, run to it. Amen? Amen. God bless you.